If you ask the average person who Warren Buffett is, then they probably know or at the very least have heard his name before. But if you ask the average person who Jack Bogle is, then most of them would have no clue. I mean no clue. They'd probably think it was a high-end luxury brand that creates some of the dumbest pieces of clothing that you've ever seen. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! My dog could come up with a better concept than those clowns, and she's outside right now rolling around in her own turds. What are the kids calling this nowadays? The Standing 96? Just to confirm my assumption, I sat down with a couple of my buddies to record a podcast the other day and asked them if they knew who Jack Bogle is. And sure enough, they had no clue. Little do they know how much he changed their investing lives for the better. But why is Jack such a legend in the investing world? There are many reasons, but one of them is the fact that he put the average investor like us ahead of massive profits that he could have made through the company that he started, Vanguard. Yes, he passed away with a reported net worth of $80 million, which is definitely a lot, but if he would have charged what everyone else was charging, then that number would have easily jumped to hundreds of millions, or I could even argue billions of dollars. I'd imagine behind closed doors, investment professionals hated what he did because he forced them to create lower cost funds to compete with the ones that Vanguard was offering. How could they not hate the guy? Before Jack came along with his low cost Vanguard funds, the financial professionals would sell you a fund for a yearly fee of 1% or higher. That 1% fee would equate to $10 of profit per year in their pocket for every $1,000 that you had invested. Compare that to the better performing low cost Vanguard option, which might have costed 0.06% and Vanguard is only profiting 60 cents for every $1,000 that you had invested. I usually don't do public math, but Vanguard funds were, and in most cases still are, more than 16 times less expensive. It would be like you buying a top of the line Apple laptop for $3,000 while another manufacturer is selling you a lower quality laptop for $48,000. Although Jack has since passed away, he has left an enormous amount of teachings for us to continue to learn from. Let's go through some of his thoughts on recessions, stock market downturns, risk, and a few other things as well. Are we headed into a recession or are we currently in a recession? I have heard people say yes, I have heard people say no, and I have heard people say every other response that you can think of. So how does Jack think that investors should react during times like these? I don't think, I, I think you should invest for the long term. And if you're investing for a lifetime or for the next 15, 20 years, whatever it might be, uh, there you know in that period, looking ahead, there are gonna be a certain number of recessions, mm -hmm. a certain number of booms, uh, a certain number of good times and some bad times. That's the way the markets are. And to try and get in at the bottom and out at the top is simply impossible for anybody. But it's a very good bet that uh, stocks will do significantly better than bonds over the coming decade. The answer is always that there is a 50-50 chance as well as who knows and who cares. Anyone who says one way or the other with any certainty is just guessing. So how do you financially get through a recession? The same way you financially get through the times that we are not in a recession. Stay employed or if you're out of work, then find another job. As long as you're working your butt off for your employer and you have marketable skills, then someone is going to employ you. It's not like society one day just stops working when we're in a recession. It continues humming along. The only difference is that the media blows things even more out of proportion than they already do. If you would like to help support my dog Molly, as well as this channel, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button. The world is inherently dangerous and risky. I'm pretty surprised that we've made it this far with how random this whole thing is. The stock market, the economy, and society are always going through this push-pull state where every single one of them constantly seems off balance. Too much of this, too little of that, and never completely balanced. Jack gives us his thoughts on how to handle it all. You have potential nuclear war, global warming, much more than just potential, and racial division in the country uh, right now, uh, threats to world trade, uh, division of wealth all over the world, but most often well, very heavily in the U.S., between the haves and the have-nots. All those things are worth worrying about, but I said to him, you don't know, and I don't know, what's going to happen to any of them. The market doesn't know. Nobody knows. So you just have to put them out of your mind and forget it. What you want to think about is how much risk you can afford, and that's very much a personal thing, 
and uh, has a little bit to do with whether you're investing regularly and things like that. Although it's impossible to find balance from the outside world, at the very least, we can create some balance within the way that we think and the things that we do. Put that out of your mind and forget it is great advice. Of course, worry about the issues that you feel are important to you, but none of it should change how you're investing. For a while there, I was constantly listening to people talking about macroeconomics. While it was extremely helpful to grow my overall knowledge, it started to have a negative impact on me personally. Holy smokes, those people are the biggest doomsdayers that I've ever listened to. I wouldn't be surprised if they all have underground bunkers with years worth of food ready for when they think the world is going to end. They are great at listing all of the problems and how society is basically going to collapse but no real solution for investors other than buy gold. What I learned is that it is good to be informed, but there comes a point in which being too informed causes you to do really dumb things with your money. Like buy a whole bunch of gold that you don't have access to. And if you wanna buy the actual gold, you're gonna store it in your house because you're not gonna put it in a bank because when society collapses, uh, you can't get into the bank. So you gotta keep it all in your house. Seems like a great idea. There's a lot of smart people out there who are great at connecting the dots for how things should play out. Unfortunately, there are way too many moving parts in the economy and the stock market to accurately predict what's really going to happen. Towards the end of the last clip, Jack mentioned something about risk. Now this is a topic I've been thinking about lately because it affects all of us as investors and humans in general. No matter what you invest in, it is extremely important to assess the risk of how you are investing and what you are investing your money into. Let's listen in to how Jack thinks about risk. Now what is risk? Let me tell you what it is not. It is not volatility. We use volatility to measure risk. You know, if the market goes up, well, let me say, um, or down 25%, uh, and you own the market, that's what you do. If you want to reduce the volatility in a balanced fund, you know, you maybe go up or down 15%. Uh, and if you want to get an extremely aggressive fund, maybe up and down 40%. There are risks that we can't measure. Um, there are risks that come from things like what is the probability that our society will collapse? What is the probability that with all the undercurrents that are going on in American society between the haves and have-nots? And then there are the known risks, like nuclear war, uh, worldwide disease, plague kind of thing, uh, religious uprisings, um, the things that we know about and worry about today. And then as my fellow Princetonian Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld says, those are the known unknowns. And what about the unknown unknowns? And of course, since they're unknown, we can't comment on them. Mm. And the unknown risks that we really don't know, for, you know, we don't know what they are, uh, which is kind of frightening, um, but invest you must. So you can sit and worry about it every day. And uh, you know, in certain respects, if you like to worry, it's a good thing to worry about. But you kind of have to get on with your game, prepare for the future, and hope that those extreme risks don't come home to roost. Anything and everything in the world can and will go wrong in the future, but we'll never know when and how. Because we don't know what those risks will be, all we can do is commit to an investing style that we believe in. This is why in many videos, I remind viewers how important it is to invest in a way that you're able to hold on during the good and bad times. Forget chasing higher investment returns because if you can't even hold on during the down years to get those higher potential returns, then you're wasting your time. Your efforts are better served buying low cost index funds and accepting the average market returns that that investment will bring you. With how uncertain the future is, the only thing that we can do is plan for the worst hope for the best, and project our negative thoughts out into the future to prepare for all of the unknown possibilities. One of my favorite Stoic philosophers, Seneca, summed it up perfectly. What is quite unlooked for is more crushing in its effect, and unexpectedness adds to the weight of a disaster. The fact that it was unforeseen has never failed to intensify a person's grief. This is a reason for ensuring that nothing ever takes us by surprise. We should project our thoughts ahead of us at every turn and have in mind every possible eventuality instead of only the usual course of events. The legend Jack Bogle has left us with some insight on the good thing about the stock market tanking like it has been recently. Uh, the, the answer is yes, continue to invest. I told particularly young people in the office who are really uh, petrified by this market decline that it's the best 
thing that ever happens to him. And if you think about it logically, of course it's wonderful. I mean, think of, say, the young man I was talking to yesterday. He's probably 25 or 26 years old, and he's got the rest of his life in invest. And I said, well, let's, let's suppose uh, that uh, Chris, uh, Chris Scott's name is. I said, let's suppose, Chris, that the market's going to end up at Jim Glassman's 36000 by the time you retire. Do you want to be investing all your money with the, with the, uh, when the Dow is at uh, 35000 or invest it all when it's 9000 Just think about that for a minute. Of course, you want a long time to invest at low prices, and it's a, uh, certainly a frightening advantage for those of us who have some money at work in the market today to think of this as a blessing. But it is a blessing because in the long run, investing depends on accumulating money at sound prices and not inflated prices like we have. I also think the general economy and the financial markets are well served by a return to reality. When you leave reality and depart from the laws of gravity, uh, there's nothing but bad things that can happen, and the higher you fly, the more you fall. We flew quite high enough, and I think it's a blessing maybe a blessing in heavy disguise, a blessing that we've come back a little bit toward the ground. That clip was from 2001, almost 20 years ago. It's funny to think that the advice Jack gave back then during a market decline continues to be relevant today. And the next time that we go through this sort of thing, it'll still apply. Nothing is ever as bad as it seems and nothing is ever as good as it seems either. Pick your investment strategy, continue buying, and as always, stay the course. I'd appreciate a thumbs up on this video if you don't mind. The Private Financial Independence Discord is now open to everyone. Apply for access through the link in the description. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Done.